Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Black Gay Wellbeing. Today is our fourth episode. And if you're new to us, uh, I'm one of your hosts, Jerome Braggs, and I'm joined by my other host. I'm Donnie Hill. And today's topic uh, is a really juicy one for us. Uh, if you are a Black same gender loving man, you're probably going to resonate with this very strongly. You're probably going to get some ahas from this. Um, and I just wanted to open up with telling you a little bit about what, and, and the topic basically is the permission to be mediocre. And I want to kind of give open up by giving you the inspiration for why we came to this topic and why we wanted to talk about this. So last week I was having a conversation with another friend of mine and I had called him to discuss this personal aha that I had, almost this personal breakthrough. And <clears throat> For years, I have been wanting to uh, put out a series of online classes, a series of online courses, and start an online school, uh, giving my work on healing and well-being and soul growth and self-love. But I hadn't been doing that. And there were several reasons why I hadn't been doing it in my head uh, until I came across someone who off was offering a similar program and was kind of in the field of the work that I do. And so I bought this woman's program and I was looking at it and her setup was so simple. It didn't have all these bells and whistles that I thought was necessary. And her setup was so simple, but yet the message and the medicine she was offering was yet so profound. And even though it was so simple, I received all of it. I loved it. I didn't think anything was lacking. I didn't think anything was missing. Like I was here for it. And that awareness of, of me, her being, being very simple in her um, presentation and what she had put out. And it wasn't all these, these big, you know, bells and whistles that I thought you needed to have in order to put things like that out. The, from the marketing to the presentation, all of it was really simple. And yet here she had thousands and thousands of people in this program. And the program was highly effective. Like I was deeply moved by it and deeply transformed by it. And that broke a chain in me. It broke a chain and I was calling my friend to say, hey, I just realized how much I had been suppressing myself and sabotaging myself from coming out and putting this stuff out because I thought I had to be so much and I had to do so much and I had to do so much more and be so much more than what I was doing and not really realizing that I'm enough and that I could just do it from where I am. And so we were having this conversation about being enough. And he said something to me, and this is, the, this is what, what the impetus for this conversation is today. He said, you know, you have permission to be mediocre. You don't have to be excellent all the time. And although we got that message as Black people that we have to be excellent at all times, there's a benefit to that, which means you rise up to being excellent, but there's also a shadow to that, which is, and that's what we want to talk about today. So I won't, I won't, <laughs> won't just jump into the shadow quite yet. But that's the, it was the shadow and realizing that the narrative that we got growing up as black people, especially black men, and especially as black same gender loving men, the message that we got that you have to be excellent, right? And you know it in all these different forms, like you gotta be twice as good as them to get half as much. You know, you've heard that. You, you heard in order to even show up in the room, you gotta have all your T's crossed and all your I's dotted before they'll even let you in the room. And so, you know, we all grew up with this idea that black meant you had to be excellent. And again, there's this, there's benefits to that because you rise up. Like I was telling Donnell, I was like, listen, when I want to put my excellent hat on, it's top notch. Like you can't touch me on my stuff. However I want to show up and whatever I'm doing, when I'm ready to do it for real, you can't touch it. 
it's off it's out of this world right it's it's excellent a plus 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 level work and a plus plus level service a plus plus level product but there's a shadow side to this message that we don't ever really talk about in our community in today's episode we're going to look at what that shadow is and how it shows up in our lives detrimentally and how it has disabled us and what we need to do to shake that shadow part of it off so that we can live more well lives mm -hmm. so today we're going to be talking about the permission to be mediocre as a black gay man Ooh, I can't tell you how, how much I've been looking forward to this conversation. And I didn't text you earlier today because I knew if I started texting you, I'd want to call you and have the conversation there and then we wouldn't have this conversation live. Um, but even as you were just sharing what came up again was how much that programming is tied into um, into the roots of slavery. It's like, we're working hard to get to white standards and we're never going to get to those standards because they aren't ours. Um, and so when you think about excellence and just that conversation, for me, what comes to mind is that excellence according to whom, mm. right? Is it white excellence or are we defining it in terms of black excellence and if we're defining it in terms of black excellence then it shouldn't have anything to do with anybody else's standards you know as you say that it, it makes me think this thing about how um as we talk about excellence and just that before we even talk about this shadow right mm -hmm. so I, I love that you brought that in about whose standard is it and and because what I think has happened as black people in America is we have never really actually defined anything for ourselves that is not in relationship to whiteness. Like everything we have definition is always about what it is in relation to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not like this is a freestanding thing on its own. And as we get into the shadow, you're going to really start to see this for you all watching and listening. You're going to really start to see how this really plays out in your own life. But like we haven't had a chance to just to look at ourselves as a whole being on its own and not have to always think about ourselves as in how it compares or relates or competes with something else like and that's the thing and that and that in itself just me outside saying it makes me understand that that's not an action of wholeness yeah that's not an action of wholeness wholeness does not need to look anywhere else but here and so our standard of excellence, like what I learned from my own parents was like, our standard of excellence was, was based upon how they were gonna view you, how they were gonna think about you. What were they gonna think about you if you got into the door at this job? Well, how are they gonna think about you trying to get into your colleges? If you wanna make a living and make a good thing, how are they gonna respond to you? So in order to make sure that their response to you isn't one of negativity or oppression or, um, or even not even letting you in the room and ostracizing you to the margins of the page, right? So in order to make sure that you have to think about how they're going to think about you and your, and your performance in the world has to be up here so that you don't give them any reason to say no, to say, uh, mm -hmm. or to say, mm, maybe not. Yeah. Right. And so again, my existence as it as it stands into my gifts my skill sets my talents my genius has always been filtered through how they're going to be expressed and related to whiteness and that is a but okay so so some people are like well okay great because that's the world you live in and, and like that's the thing so here's the problem Right, so here's how the where the where the shadow part comes up. So the blessing in that is that you get to see just how good you can get. Like if you <laughs> rise to it, 
you can rise to very great heights and you can see, oh, there is no limit to the genius and the skill sets and the talents of blackness. Like blackness doesn't, it, it breaks that message, right? That message that, oh, you can't do as much or you can't be as much because we have many examples now of, of black excellence where we go above and beyond, way beyond what was told was possible for us, right? So that's the blessing of it. The shadow of it is this. The shadow of it is connecting back to the, to the conversation I started when I was having with my friend, I was talking to him on the phone about the breakthrough I had. The shadow was this. What I realized for myself was that why I wasn't showing up, why I hadn't put these things out, and I hadn't done these courses, these classes, I hadn't built this online school, I hadn't done that, is because the message in my head was that since you don't have these bells and whistles and things on this yet, and since this isn't excellent, it doesn't deserve to exist. And so the message for me was, the message in my head and the message that Black excellence has put in me is that if I don't work really, really hard for something, if I don't put 175,000% <laughs> into it, I don't deserve, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to receive, I don't. And so what that has done is it makes me sabotage my good. And it makes me sabotage any type of receiving if it's not 100, if I haven't put 175% into it. And so what the message is, again, is that I am not worthy of receiving my good, receiving my dreams, receiving any type of blessing if I haven't worked really, really, really hard for it, if I haven't gone 1,7500%, and not only do am I not worthy to receive, but I'm not even worthy to show up in the room. And that, collapses our ability to live. Here I am having dreams and cravings in my heart for years and not doing them and going starving, starving myself from what would bring me joy, starving myself from expressing myself into the world, starving myself from something I feel is my purpose, starving myself from it because I am sabotaging it and not even taking a step to putting it out because it doesn't deserve to even exist in the world if it's not top notch level. And that's the shadow side. That is the handicap side that has so many of us. And this is where I said, you know, you all, you can, you all can raise your hands because I know many of you all are, raising, are resonating with that. Yeah. How many of us out there have not chased our dreams with abandon, have not written that book, have not sung that song, have not stepped on that stage and tried, you know, stand-up comedy, have not showed up and asked for this raise or showed up in our, our, or chased this dream we had of opening this business or whatever it is, because in our mind, it's not good enough yet. And since it's not good enough, it doesn't even deserve to, I don't deserve to receive any kind of good from it. And it doesn't even it deserve to show up in the world. Yeah. You know, when I, when I think about my experience and my work is all around like personal sustainability and, and joyful living. Um, and as you were talking, like I could see myself on the hamster wheel, just like running and running and running and running and running, and running trying to get to this next thing and this next thing and this next thing. And what just landed and shifted for me was, oh, I've, I've become my own master where I'm just beating myself and say, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And when I think about that from a health standpoint, that's the worst thing that I could do. That's the most unloving thing that I could do. And when I first started like striving and wanting to pursue excellence, it was because I wanted to be the best and I wanted to, to prove myself and not only to myself, but also to other people. 
And then there was a, a period in my life where things began to shift and I began to question like, why am I, why am I doing this? Why am I spending all this time and energy and effort trying to get to something? Um, and now with everything that's happening uh, around the pandemic and around the, the protests and the unrest, it's really given me time to slow down and reflect and say, all right, am I wanting to take a step off the hamster wheel now or do I want to stay on and just know if I get, if I choose to stay on the hamster wheel, I'm the one who's doing the whipping, nobody else is. And I needed to be that graphic for myself in order for me to say, all right, this isn't working. And for me to, to find another way of operating and moving through the world and thinking about my work and building my business because the way that I was doing it wasn't healthy for me and it wasn't in alignment with what was nourishing for me. Yeah, I think, you know, I just want to kind of resound and be a resounding word for something you said that's really beautiful, is that this is how we become our own oppressor. Mm -hmm. This is how we become our own oppressor. We're, we can be so out externally focused. And that's not, I'm not here to say that there aren't systems and people out there who aren't, you know, consciously trying to oppress us. I'm not saying that at all. But there are so many ways in which we oppress ourselves and understanding who we are as soul beings, right? And we understand that our life is our creation and we are in charge of our reality. What we often miss is the, we think that the, why the dreams and things aren't, aren't happening is because either the universe doesn't want them to happen or because somebody out there is trying to keep them from happening. But what we, what we often miss, and I'll say always miss, is the way we are oppressing ourselves and suppressing ourselves and keeping ourselves from our well-being and our dreams and our happiness and our joy. You know, that's well-being is like happiness, health, joy, and feeling good in our lives and feeling fulfilled. And, you know, as we're talking about Black gay well-being, I think as Black gay men, this is one of the things in which we keep ourselves from that. We sabotage it because here's what happens. If you don't think you're worthy of something, right? If you don't think you're worthy of something, then it won't come. You're, 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 the universe won't bring it to you because the universe only matches what you feel worthy to. So if I don't feel worthy, if I don't feel I've worked hard enough to get this money, if I don't think I look, I've, I, I've gotten slim enough to get this man, if I don't think I'm excellent enough to receive whatever it is that I want, it's not going to come. And I'm going to sabotage it. My energy is going to sabotage it. And that's the thing I think that, um, that I had this big aha around was like, here I was, here was this good that the universe was like, here's something that you're really worthy of and that you really want and that will really fulfill you. And here I am like slapping it out of the universe's hand, like not yet. <laughs> don't give it to me yet. Cause I don't deserve it yet. Don't, don't, don't. Like I still need to work hard. And the universe is like, my child, I love you. You're worthy. Here it is. And I'm like, no, not yet. Get that away from me. Not yet, right? And the breakthrough that I had, that I had when I called my friend, the breakthrough that I had was like, oh, I'm enough. And this is that insidious message again of I'm not enough. That old emotional wound showing, rearing its head again <laughs> in another area of my life. Like I've done a lot of work. If you all know me, if you follow me, you know, I talk about I am enough a lot. And I've done a lot of work around that. And I've healed a lot around it, but here was an area where the universe was like, here's where you haven't healed this message around this yet, right? Because here's the thing, I may wanna have all the bells and whistles, but what I have is enough. Because again, what the black excellence message says is you don't even deserve to show up in the room if you're not all the way up here. And what I realized for myself was, it was, and I had evidence of this woman who I hold in high, high, high regard at the top of the field, right? And I hold her like, I think she is killing it. She is the standard to me of what I aspire to be like, right? And here she is putting this whole thing out and it doesn't have all these bells and whistles and it was, per it was perfect. And I think that like, it broke, it was like, oh, 
I'm enough. I may want to do these bells and whistles, but what I have is enough. And all the different messages that Black excellence seeps into, right? So here it was seeping into my work, that unless I had the top of the line video production, unless I had the top of the line copy, unless I had the best marketing strategy, I didn't deserve to put this out. And here I have people, by the way, I have people in my newsletter, I have people on my, on my social platforms that are in my inbox daily, like, when are you gonna put something out? We want you to do, we cannot wait. For, for your classes, we, I just want this, please, 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 please. For years, I haven't been putting nothing out, right? Because it's just not good enough yet, it's not good enough. And it really finally hit me how I had been poisoning myself and keeping myself from my joy and my own fulfillment by thinking I had to, see, this is the other thing too about the black excellence message. What it tells you is you have to be something other than yourself. <laughs> that who you are, right here and right now is not enough you gotta you gotta rearrange yourself you gotta edit and, and add to yourself and take away before you even get to show up in the room and that's the messaging that's the part of that message that is poisoning us as a people it is literally poisoning us and it is leading to death. It's leading to early death because you're not living your dreams. You're not putting your genius out in the world. And so you're just kind of existing in zombie level because you're not happy. You start to feel depressed and you start to feel sad. And it never, like, again, I love this thing that you're talking about, about being on this like rat, this like <laughs> rat race because it doesn't stop. Because here's the other thing about excellence. You reach that level, and then all of a sudden, now you think you have to be at this other level. And how the universe works, too. So you reach a level of excellence, and the universe is going to attract to you people who are at that new level. So now the people that you, 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 you respond to, they're the people operating at this new level and people operating a level higher. So if you still have this pattern of always comparing yourself and thinking you're not enough, then it's gonna happen right again. Those people at that higher level, you're gonna be like, I really should have been doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not like them and I really should do this. And man, I need to up my game. And, and so it does, this, it does these two things and now I'll shut up. Like it does these two things. It, it suppresses you from being able to express who you really are into the world as you are right now. And then it exhausts the fuck out of you because you are constantly stressed trying to get better get better improve 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 instead of just accepting and expressing and that is what i had been i had i just had not it was so insidious i wasn't even realizing this is what i here i am teaching people and clients all about this helping them heal this aspect in them and here it was here it was operating in me where I was in this constant rat race of self-improvement and telling myself I don't deserve to show up and I don't deserve to receive because I'm not good enough yet. Mm -hmm. well, there are a couple of things. One is a comment <laughs> and a reflection. And then I have some questions for you. Um, the first one is, is um, there are people who are starving and dying for our mediocre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say that, wait a minute, because <laughs> this, is the, this is the medicine moment right here, because you just gave the medicine. So we want to sit and we need to hear this medicine and then we need to breathe it in. Okay. So say it again. All right. There are people who are starving and dying for your mediocre. Mm. So, I know what that is. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about what you mean. When I think, when I think about my, my process for bringing my work into the world, um, I, I have the little circus going on in the background of, okay, it has to have A, B, C, D, and E in order for me to put it out. And I realize by me, trying to figure out what A through E are and not putting it out now, there are people who are still suffering because what I have right now could just help them. Mm. And so, yeah. Mm. Go, no, go ahead, go ahead. And so 
when we when we're constantly in this place striving for excellence and not honoring that our mediocre is enough not only are we um, dismissing ourselves and our process which is very important because it is how we got to where we are um, but we're also withholding medicine that our people need and that our people want and so for instance take black gay well-being we show up when we show up and then you know we have this conversation we have an idea about what we want to talk about but all of the pieces in between we don't figure it out before the session we're just talking it through and then something comes and it turns into <laughs> it turns into an episode and i can imagine like wanting to sit down with you and say all right jerome we're gonna, let's figure out what the next 10 episodes are going to be are we going to have guest speakers or not when are we going to put out the marketing campaigns and what are you going to do on your social media uh pages and what should i do on my social media pages all the while the black same gender loving men are just on the <laughs> on the circus just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again waiting for us to show up waiting for us to show up as we are like yeah. and and just to go even deeper into what you're talking about remember we talked about we've been talking about this for for several years too and it was like we want to do it on tv we have to do it in person we have to do it this way we have to do it this way and then we just finally said if we keep doing this it's never going to come out let's just show up as we are in this zoom we we got zoom we got social platforms let's just show up right and if we had not just made that decision to say we're enough as we are, we would have just been in this rat race and the peop this medicine, whatever the medicine is, mm -hmm. people would have been starving for it still. I'm gonna share you, with you a, a personal story yeah. with you with around your um what you just shared. <clears throat> so <laughs> this was when I was living in DC before my health challenge started. And if you've been following me, you know the health challenge that has basically shaped my whole life and, and led me to the work I do now. So this was, I used to throw parties and I was very well known for my parties. And I would throw parties and I would, was driven by the message of excellence. And so I thought one, the food, had to be top notch and i would cook everything so in order for it to be top notch i had to cook it right mm -hmm. and so i cooked everything and this is the one that happened right before this is the party i had right before i went to the hospital and i had had <laughs> there was about there was going to be about 30 to 40 people coming over to my apartment for this party and i cooked ribs i like smoked some some racks of ribs i cooked hamburgers hot dogs i fried some fish i fried some chicken chicken wings i made turkey burgers i made um uh burnt ends i made i, I grilled chicken um chicken breast i did potato salad i did <laughs> salads i had dessert i spent all like all of a 24 hours straight <laughs> cooking no exaggeration so by the time the party came i was exhausted i was so drained and i didn't even have enough energy to engage i literally wanted those people as soon as the party started i wanted them to go home because i wanted to go to bed and what i also noticed is while they appreciate it, I mean, the spread of food was, it was laid out, right? While they appreciated all of that, what, all, what they really loved was like chips and some wings. That's all they, that's all they wanted. That's all they needed. And I, and so when they left, I was so drained. And I know now, you know, we'll talk about this in a future episode, but I know now that was part of my illness manifesting was I had this history of being exhausted and doing things, thinking I needed to do things 
you know, at 10,000 level to where I don't have any more energy left for myself, right? And, but the other thing that I learned from that was just like you said, like the mediocre is medicine too. Mm -hmm. So what they wanted was a space to get together and connect. The food didn't have to be on 10,000. So what I did then was like, from then point on, like one time I had it catered, which I didn't have to cook anything. There was no energy, it just came in. And then I learned from that too. Like they loved it and all. From then on, it was like, I got pizza and wings. And they lived. And people still were like, Jerome, your parties are the best. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go this above and beyond to have a blessing or to even be a blessing. I just had to be myself. I wanted people to come over. I wanted to have a great time. And I have some food here. It doesn't have to be top notch, 100,000% at all times. And I think that, and it taught me that, just the party thing taught me so much. Because now what happens is I'm at these parties and I'm fully in my energy. I'm not drained. I'm not upset and resentful. I don't want anybody to go home. I'm fully here. I'm showing up fully. And I get the blessing of interacting and the joy of that and, and the blessing of seeing everybody have a great time. And that was this huge message around your mediocre is enough. Mm -hmm. It's enough. And I think as Black people, we don't have that message anywhere and it's poisoning us. We think we have to be so much more and we have to put on and do so much more, so much so that we're exhausted. We don't have any type of relationship with rest and we're not loving ourselves because we're always in the message of what I am right now, no matter how many degrees I have, no matter how smart I am, no matter, even if I don't, even if I don't have degrees, I may be super talented in something. It might not even be super talented in this thing over here. I may be, I can cook, or I may have a smart wit, or I'm very strong. I know something about cars. And it's like, we are constantly telling ourselves whatever the gifts are that we have, as they exist right now in our bodies, they're not enough. And they're not enough in order for us to receive what we really want. And they're not enough to like, to, to, to show up, you know, this is when I used to do business mentoring, <laughs> one of the biggest, and I think, you know, even you and I had this conversation before, <laughs> but like when I used to do business mentoring, one of the things I saw is how much, how there's so many genius businesses out there that never see the light of day because the people think they're not enough. I talk to people and say, what's your, what's, what would you like to do? Oh, I would like, I would like to, you know, I would really like to help people with relationships. Okay, great. So start doing some classes. Oh, I need this degree. I need, I need to get this certification. You know, I'm not as good as this person over here. And I'm like, so tell me what you've learned about relationships. And then they talk about it. And I'm like, do you know that that, little bit that you share with me, somebody out that will heal somebody's life and that will take them to a level of life they've never imagined was possible for them. They're waiting on you to come out and say that. But you think because it doesn't sound like this person's or because you don't have these degrees. And again, it's that because I'm not in your mind what excellence is. Mm -hmm. I'm not that excellent that I don't even deserve to show up in the world and be here and put out. And that has been again, that shadow has covered us in darkness. And so many of us live a life of darkness because that message is running. When what we need to know instead is take that message off, give ourselves permission because it was given to us. We didn't create it. It was given. Like, it's like, it's a present. Like, okay, I had fun with it for a while. I no longer need this and I'm giving it back. And the gift I'm going to give myself now that I know that I need is I'm enough. You, um, you and I talk, talk a lot about this of the, the being versus the doing. 
And as you were sharing the story about throwing the party, what kept surfacing is people just wanted to be in your presence. The food didn't, the food didn't matter. And I, I think I never received that, that message growing up of like your presence is more than enough. Mm -hmm. And so I, I ended up doing all of this stuff to try and make up for the hole that I was feeling around my presence not being enough. And I think, I think a lot of black people do that. I think a lot of black same gender loving people do that where they're, they're filling this void with degrees and houses and all of this external stuff. And it, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. It, if that's what you want, that's what you want. Um, but I think it's really important to remember just how much we matter without all of the accolades and degrees and <laughs> homes and cars and everything. We are whole yeah. and worthy without all of that. Yeah. If you never got another degree, if you never took another course, if you never added and made whatever you had, it's what you're worthy and whole and the world is asking for what you have. And that's the, that's the thing, like the world is asking for what you have right now, without it being perfected, without it being, it wants that. That's the missing piece to the world right now. That thing you have in your hand right now, that's it. And it's just, the world is like, could you give, could you, I, I would love that thing. I would love that. What's that? Could you, could you give that? Oh my God, please give that to me. And we're like, mm -mm, you can't see this yet. And the world is like, please, please, could you, oh my God, please, 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 please. I need like, two mm -hmm. more years of school before you can. <laughs> right? And, it's, and we just perpetually, we just perpetually over here like, <laughs> and it's, it's like, just it, it, this is the thing that you discover, by the way, because this is what I've discovered in my in my life on many levels. When you finally just say, "Here," the world takes it, and then it shows you. It shows you how ridiculously fucking beautiful that thing is already and how absolutely worthy it is. And it showers you and it lets you know that you deserve to be in the room just like this with this thing right here and how beautiful and whole you are. But you don't ever get to see that until you take the courage to be like, okay. And that's the, that's the big lesson. And, and by the way, this message, we, I know we talked about this on the phone before, like a few days ago, but like, by the way, this black excellence message does, does, just doesn't show up in work. It also shows up in your body. Because think about black gay men, let's think about it. How many of us believe we don't deserve to show up in a room full of men and be desired and be desirable if we don't have that six pack. If we don't have that perfect body, if we don't look like that magazine cover, right? How many of us are killing ourselves in the gym? Not because we wanna be athletes and we wanna to start to engage more in sports, we wanna perform better in some type of activity. Not because of that, but because we want to look better and we want to finally feel, not look better. Let me, let me say it like this. It's not even look better. You want to look enough. You want to be accepted enough. You believe that unless you have the perfect body, again, this is that black excellence thing. Unless you have the perfect body, you don't even deserve to be desired. You don't even deserve to show up in the room at the party. You, you need to hide yourself. Think about people at the pool. Because I, I used to be this one, by the way. So I'm not speaking about people out here that I don't know anything about. Think about the people at the pool. This was me, by the way. I thought that, I, how dare I be out at this swimming pool when people are taking their shirts off? Let me, I can't with, with this body that doesn't have a six pack. How dare I put this horrible body out in the public space? So let me cover it up and always wear a shirt at the pool. 
because I don't have a six pack. And so I, uh, my body doesn't deserve to just exist and show up at the pool and enjoy itself on its own. It needs to have shame attached to it because it's not excellent. Like that's another place this message shows up is that we are taking that our bodies aren't enough as they are to be loved, to receive love from somebody else or to receive like affection or like ogling or to, 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 to believe that you are the desired thing that somebody is like chomping at the bit for, right? You only believe that you're worthy of that type of attention and that type of thing if you have a six pack. I mean, think about how many brothers would be like, but the guy on the, the cover of the magazine, he, I've seen this so many times where he wanted the friend that wasn't in shape Hmm. or the friend who wasn't hyper masculine he wanted that one and it was so enamored with this one and my and those friends i've seen it where they sabotaged it because they didn't even believe that he was being truthful they didn't even believe that this man could really be this into me because this body's not excellent this mask, this, this gender expression is not excellent, right? And so it's insidious. It is so many places where we believe we do not deserve to receive and we do not deserve to show up because we are not fitting into whatever idea of excellent is. When you think about um, permission and mediocrity, what do those mean for you? And also what, what has been your process for allowing mediocre to be enough? Yeah, so um, I love that you asked this because I'm in the process of that right now. So, <laughs> um, so permission to me is like, it's, it's like a permission slip that I used to get in the, in the um, when I was in, in elementary school. Like I can get a permission slip to go into the hall or I have a permission slip to miss this class, but it's like, I have permission to do what, what I wanted to do, really. And what I wanna do is show up. What I wanna do is be me. What I wanna do is be loved. What I wanna do is receive good things that I want. And I have permission. I have permission. I have it. I've been waiting for excellence to give me permission, but I already have it. That's what it means. Excellence isn't the um, principle that gives me my permission slips. <laughs> I am, I exist. My existence has given me all the permission slips I need. That's the first thing. The second thing is mediocre to me says, I, I, I wanna have the bells and whistles, but what I have is enough. I'd love to have, you know, a six pack and, you know, all of that, but how my body is, is lovable enough. I would love, and, and if I have more energy and I have more time and I want to do something like this and I want to make it and I want to change it, I can do that. But I don't need to do it out of believing that if I don't do it, I don't deserve. That's what mediocre means to me. It doesn't mean less than. And I think that's what we've associated it with. It means less than. Mediocre doesn't mean less than. It means whole. It means what you have. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> right? It means you stop doing that <laughs> and you just do what I have is enough. And I offer it. I offer my. I offer who I am. I'm going to show up in this room, and I'm going to feel sexy and attractive. And I'm going to know that I could deserve. I'm not going to be hiding myself. Whether I'm in this room with, with everybody else that got a six pack, and I'm the only one who doesn't or not. You know, I have. By the way, we have to do a whole another episode because I got a whole <laughs> lot of stories on that. But, um, you know that and. and Prime example, like tonight, I'm I'm doing a I wanted to do a video for 
um, my program that I'm putting together, right? And so I wanted to do this welcome video. And in my head, I needed to use my awesome camera that I have had and I need to have the perfect shot. And I was going back and forth and I had got upset because I had left my camera and I had come to my, to, to my location where I wanted to shoot it. And I was just gonna be like, oh God, I had promised myself I was gonna shoot it today, but I guess I'm not gonna shoot it. And then I heard the voice and I was like, you have your computer. It may not be the highest quality of video, but it's not about the quality. The people just wanna see you and they wanna hear what you have to say. Just show up and say. Mm -hmm. And it'd be enough. This is the intro video anyway. It's not even like one of the, <laughs> here you are pressuring yourself for something that's going to be two minutes long and you have enough. It's enough. So that's what it means to me is like the constant reminder that I am enough. I don't need to add to myself or rearrange myself or, or take away from myself or edit myself in any way what I am right now deserves to show up. And I already have everything I need to show up, by the way. That's another thing too. I have everything I need already to show up. I don't need to wait on something else. Whatever I have in my bag, right? And for those kids that are watching us, if y'all wear these clutches, whatever you have in that clutch, baby, just reach it's on down in that clutch enough. and pull it out. And that's, what, that's your key into the door, right? And that's the... That's the message for me is that who I am right now is always, that's it. Who I am right now is always the key to the, that opens the door. I always have the key to open the door. I don't need any other key. I, the one I have right here is, I just need to pull it out and put it in, in, into the keyhole and twist it. That's it. That's it. I don't need any other key, the key I have right now. And that's the medicine that I remind myself over and over. Jerome, you have the key now. You want to talk to that dude? He's super fine. You have the key. You don't need to go do some 10 more sit-ups. You don't need to go fast. You don't need to go walk your ass over there and say, hey, brother, what's going on? I think you're attractive. If I want to put this program out, I don't need the top level mics and all the lights and what I have right now, that's enough. I can start it. And if I want to add and, and get better as I go, fine. But right now I can show up in this room with what I have. I can open this door and walk through it. So I got a question for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're like in our last few minutes here, but I want to like, you didn't work <laughs> me up. So I need to work you up just a little bit. <laughs> Where would you say, if you could take a deep breath and tune in, where would you say the message of Black excellence is still sabotaging you? <laughs> You messy. <laughs> oh, he's so messy. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say that it's showing up in I would say it's showing up in in my work and my personal life right now. And part of part of what's happening uh, is that I am rebuilding my business. I'm rebuilding my relationships. Uh, I'm rebuilding my health. I'm rebuilding my my own spirituality and relationship with myself and source. Uh, and because of that. Like I'm looking at all of the <laughs> the uh, the shambles from my old life, and part of what's happening now is as I'm rebuilding, 
I'm having to talk about, or I shouldn't say I'm having to, I'm getting the opportunity to talk more about the process, like the messiness of it, the ugliness of it, the um, immaturity and joyfulness of it. And I don't have a whole lot of answers. It's like, I, I don't know. A lot of what I'm having to say these days are, I don't know, I don't know. And my black excellence was like, no, baby, you need to know how you're going to get from point A to point Z. You need to know what kinds of conversations you're going to have. You need to have this financial plan that's going to help you get from here to there. And you need to start saving so you can do this. And so I'm having, I'm watching all of that old programming and, um, and my striver like constantly be in conflict with how I'm being invited to show up today and how I'm being invited to to talk. Uh, and it it's really, really uncomfortable mm. because I'm having to let go of having it all together mm. and holding it all together. Um, and what I find is as I have those more genuine conversations, People are like, yeah, I'm right there with you. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> that was exactly what I needed to hear. Um, and it also feels, it feels so vulnerable and so open. And that's not the message you get as a little black boy. It's like, no, you need to keep that wrapped up tight. And don't tell anybody until you have it together, until you have an idea about where you're going. If people know that you are, um, you don't have an answer uh, or you don't have a plan, then they're not likely to trust you. You don't miss out on this opportunity. Um, you're not going to be able to move forward in your career and all of those, all of those messages are coming up right now. And so I'm, I'm slowly learning how to appreciate uh, black excellence and then also say, thank you. And right now I just need uh, mediocrity. And I'm starting to establish a new relationship with yeah. my mediocre being good enough. Yeah. You know? I hear you. Yeah. And I love you for sharing that. <laughs> I love you for asking me that question. <laughs> um, yeah. And just a reminder that, yeah, you are enough. And it was uh, as perfect, perfect segue because one of the things my friend told me on the phone when I talked to him, <laughs> excuse me, one of the things my friend told me on the phone when I was talking to him about my aha was he was like, what you find out is that oftentimes when you come and you offer this, you know, you offer what you have. And you were like, you know, I would have wanted more. And then people were like, well, you know, I'm, that's really great. And I would appreciate it, but this is really what I wanted. And it's all of what I wanted. And this is really enough. And I'm not even sure if you would have done all that, was that gonna be healthy for you? <laughs> like, I'm not even asking for this. I was, and actually this, what you gave me is actually even more than what I was expecting. It's more than I, and you just, you, and again, it's this message because the message we get disconnected from is the soul message, which is the truth of our being, the divine God truth of our being, which is we are enough at all times and we are never lacking anything. And there's never anything lacking about us. And what we get when we, when we slough off those messages that try to make us believe there is something lacking in us or that, or that we're not enough somehow, what ends up happening is when we show up for the world, the world begins to prove to us the truth of our soul. So the very thing you thought wasn't enough, people send in and they're like, this changed my entire life. Mm -hmm. Or this was more than I was ever asking for. This is exactly what I was dreaming of. Or, oh my God, thank you, finally. I was praying for someone like you to show up with this type of thing. And you're like, well, that wasn't even the, the best. That was, I was planning to do all this other stuff. And the universe proves to you I just wanted what was in your hand. It's enough, it's beautiful, it's everything. Just give me that. And so you stop, but it's not, it's not, it's, it can't be, it's not. And then you, get, you give it over and it's like, I'm gonna show you how enough 
and whole you are. Mm -hmm. Just watch. This, this is, this literally happened in the past two weeks. So two weeks ago, uh, one of my friends introduced me to uh, two new colleagues. And she said, they're looking for someone to teach a course on spirituality and source. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, let me connect me with them and we can talk. And so um, the, the founding team called me in for an interview and we did the interview and they asked me, how are you doing? And that, that day I had been grieving and it was just like, to be honest, I'm feeling really tender right now and here's why and this is what's happening. And so they all shared their thanks and me sharing that. And then they started laughing and I said, what's so funny? And they said, well, originally we were going to talk to you about teaching this course around spirituality, but there's another module in our series around personal accountability and we haven't found anybody for that course. So actually we think you should be the one who teaches that course. <laughs> and then I just got a call last week saying, we want you to teach that course. It was more than enough. I just needed to show up. <laughs> I just needed to show up. You just have to show up. And yeah. that's the closing message for all you brothers out there, you fellow Black same gender loving men. You have permission now to just show up because who you are and what you have is enough. And it's even more than that. It's needed. People are praying for it. And you won't find out just how needed, just how many people have been praying for it, just how perfect you and it is already until you have the courage to say, I'm gonna walk through that door just as I am with all that I have and all that I don't have, with everything that I thought I was gonna to get together and everything that's not together, I'm just gonna show up and watch because you're loved and the universe loves you. And it does not ask more from anything that it loves than only its presence. So I hope this has been a medicine for you as it's been for me. I got a healing today in this as well. So thank you all for showing up. We love you. And we'll see you next time. Bye.